Hello and welcome to this Spotlight episode on the experiment. A quick look at lesser known locomotives from the early days of steam. Sharp, Roberts and Company of Manchester, or as it is perhaps better known, Sharp, Stewart and Company, was one of the oldest engineering firms in Manchester. A firm which pioneered the use of machine tools, the standardisation of parts and the use of paper general arrangement drawings. The firm was established by Thomas Sharp of Manchester in 1806 and he was later joined by Richard Roberts, a Welshman who arrived in Manchester on the run from the militia, having failed to appear for service. Later moving to Glasgow, Sharp Stewart built their first of their many thousand locomotives at the Atlas Works on Great Bridgewater Street in Manchester City Centre in 1833. It was a very peculiar beast. Sharp Robertson Company had first toyed with the idea of building a locomotive in August 1831, but she had a long gestation, finally appearing in May 1833. We don't know what the locomotive actually looks like, other than it had vertical cylinders, 5 feet driving wheels, 3 feet diameter carrying wheels and was fitted with John Melling's patent firebox, which included a water tank beneath the fire grate which acted as a preheater. Dendy Marshall published a drawing of experiment as this locomotive came to be called in 1920, but it's not clear whether it represents experiment as built. It has a fairly conventional firebox at the rear where you'd expect it, and a horizontal multi-tubular boiler, topped with a somewhat outsized steam dome. But from here on things get a little bit... weird. There's no smoke box. Instead, the hot gases from the boiler were ducted back along the boiler barrel towards a steam dome, and exited via the ornamental steam dome cover, which was topped with a chimney. There were two vertical cylinders either side of the engine, and they used a form of piston valve rather than a slide valve. These piston valves were wrought iron cylinders perforated with holes, but due to poor lubrication and differential rates of expansion of wrought and cast iron in the cylinder block, they did not prove successful. The engine could also be worked expansively using a riding valve which worked to adjust the cut off the amount of steam reaching the main valves. The steam regulator was mounted in the steam dome, and exhaust steam from the cylinders was also exhausted in the steam dome cover cum chimney. The cylinders were vertical, as already mentioned, driving via bell cranks which transmitted the drive to the outside connecting rods of the driving wheels. The valve gear is best described as complicated, and we'll leave it at that. Experiment was also the first locomotive to use solid iron plate frames. Under trial, George and Robert Stevenson both objected to the use of vertical cylinders. In fact, they were against the Liverpool and Manchester bylaw, prohibiting their use. Robert also objected to her width, which was over 8 feet. She also burned 40% more coke than a conventional locomotive and 30% more water. Despite this, she was taken into stock in October 1834 at a cost of £700, on the proviso that she be rebuilt with outside horizontal cylinders, with new valve gear, slide valves and spring pistons, so as to, quote, convert her into an engine similar to those made by Forrester and Company for the Dublin Railway, end quote. In this form, she ran on the Liverpool and Manchester until 1836, when she was sold as a ballast engine to the Grand Junction Railway. In turn, they sold her on in 1838 to the Birmingham Engine Company. After that, she disappears from history. Experiment was both a combination of the old, the use of vertical cylinders, and the new, with the use of plate frames and piston valves. But ultimately, like so many pioneering locomotives, she suffered from what George Stevenson referred to as too much innovation. Instead of one new idea, Experiment had several all in the same machine, and as a result, rather like novelty at the Rainhill Trials, was ultimately not a success. Both of them had to be later rebuilt into a more conventional form before they could do any real work. So that's the story of Experiment. 
the first locomotive to be built by Sharp Roberts, latterly Sharp Stewart and Company. Perhaps not the most auspicious start for a company which would go on to become a world leader in locomotive building, but everyone has to start somewhere. Have you any unusual locomotives you'd like to see covered on this channel? Get the conversation going in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And be sure to check out my book, Locomotives of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, from Pen and Sword Transport, coming next year.